Would you like to create your very own custom info menu in UEFN? Well, you're in the right place because I will teach you everything you need to know over the next 20 minutes. All of the assets I used in this video, including the widget itself, will be available for free in my Discord server. You can join by following the very first link in the description. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to make your very own patch notes UI. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new folder, and this folder is going to be called UI. Inside of here, we're going to make another new folder called textures, or excuse me, textures. There we go. So what you're going to want to do next is open up the textures folder and import your background image. The one that I'm using is 800 by 900 pixels. If you decide to use one of your own, just make sure that it has the same resolution or the measurements in this video are going to be off. Once you've got your texture imported, go ahead and back out to the UI folder. Right click, go to user interface, click widget blueprint. It's really important that you click model dialog variant. This is because if you do the regular user widget, it won't work with the pop-up widget device. Go ahead and name it WBP underscore patch notes. Now that we're inside of the widget editor, we're first gonna wanna drag a canvas panel into the viewport. Go ahead and resize this to 1920 by 1080. And if you want my honest thoughts, I have no idea why we do this. If you have the answer, please leave a comment down below. All of the tutorial videos I've seen regarding UI, they say that you need to scale it up to 1920 by 1080 because it like is easier to work with or something. I've personally never really had that problem. And honestly, a few times, in fact, a lot of the time, I don't scale it up, but it's just good practice to do so. I think it has something to do with the anchors. There are ways of figuring that out. Like I'll go over that in the video, but it's more just about the fact that I have no idea why. So now that we've got our canvas all set up, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is drag an overlay inside of the canvas. We're then gonna to wanna to go over to the settings and make sure that it's anchored to the center of the screen. This is really important because if they're playing on a non-native resolution, we wanna make sure that the patch notes stay in the middle. We can also set the position X and position Y back to zero. And I like to set the size X and size Y to 100. This is just because typically when I take a widget's information and convert it into verse UI, Sometimes it's hard to look at because it can get really repetitive in the code. This is just a habit that I've gotten into. Whenever I see the 100, 100, I know that that's the size X and size Y. We are gonna size the content. So like I said, the size X and size Y doesn't really matter, but it is important that it does scale to content. The next thing we're gonna do is take an image and drag this inside of the overlay. I'm then gonna rename this to background in the actual brush drop down we can go ahead and select our texture i actually just realized we made a mistake here in the overlay we need to make sure that the alignment is set to 0 0.5 0 0.5 this is to make sure that the ui is exactly in the center of the screen going back to our image properties i like to set the horizontal and vertical alignment to the middle again this is kind of just precautionary in case of the scaling or the resolution being different the next thing we want to do is get a UEFN text block and drag that inside of the overlay. We want to make sure that it's centered horizontally with a top padding of 37.5. We then want to set the text to update info. The size is going to be 65 and the text justification is going to be aligned to the center. So now that we've got our background and title set up correctly, the next thing we need is a scroll box. If you've never used a scroll box before, don't worry, I'll show you exactly how to set it up inside of this video. But it's important that when we drag it into the canvas, it is not inside of the overlay. It needs to be a direct child of the canvas. Inside of the scroll box settings panel, make sure that it's anchored to the center of the screen. The X position is zero and the Y position is 47.5. Size X and size Y are going to be 725. Make sure it's aligned at 0 .5, 0 0.5 as well and do not size to content. It's also important to know that the Z order should be one above whatever layer your background image is on. Now that we've got our scroll box set up correctly, the next thing we need is an overlay. There aren't any settings inside of the overlay that need to be changed. We're mainly using this as an organizational tool to help us keep our hierarchies clean while we design the rest of the UI. 
The next thing we need to do is add a stack box inside of the overlay that we just created. Make sure the horizontal alignment is set to fill and the orientation is set to vertical. Now inside of that stack box, we can add our very first text block. This is going to be the very beginning of the actual patch notes. So while I was designing the UI, I spent some time playing some other Fortnite maps and I took a lot of inspiration from Lumberjack Heroes and Fortnite Legends. Both of them have really fantastic patch note designs and I thought that I could design something unique that was a mix between the two. And I hope that the things that I teach you in this video can inspire you to make something even cooler. But with all that out of the way, the first text block here is actually going to be the date. So for me, it's October 11th. I'm gonna put 2025. 10 11 and this actually is not how you write the date in america we do it the other way but i think that this looks better and it's got kind of like a patch note kind of vibe a very technical you know let me push up my glasses really quick you know but <laughs> so i already have a color picked out which i'm going to paste right here but if you don't have a color there's this really cool tool available for free on google if you just type in color picker it opens up this menu where you can slide around the RGB value, you can change the darkness or the saturation, and you can find a color that you like, and then it'll just give you the hex code right here. If this is a color that I wanted for the text, I could just go in and I would paste it, and then it would be that color. So there's one other change I'm gonna make, and I'm gonna set the font size to 24 because this is supposed to be kind of out of the way and more dull. So once you've got the text all formatted, select it and press Control D to duplicate. Now this is actually gonna be the title of the update. So in this case, it is version 1.0 release notes and i want to make sure that the text is fully white the font is 40. after that duplicate it again except this time we want to set the top padding to 24. and for this time with the text here's actually a special trick that not a lot of people know about if you're on windows and you press windows period it will actually open an emoji menu and if you didn't know uefn does support emojis some emojis so for this case, uh, let's do like a rocket. So let's put a rocket here and let's do update log. And we're gonna make this a little bit smaller. It's gonna be size 32. And we're gonna make it a little bit less bright. Like about there is good. You want it to be more of like a subheading rather than a full title. This is kind of just gonna be like a little update message that you can use if you don't wanna put update log. You could do something like uh, some stars and then do like greetings goat with like maybe another star. It's really up to you about how you want to format it. After that, duplicate it again. At this point in designing the UI, it's pretty straightforward. You can fill the scroll box with as many text blocks as you want. And this is just a really good way of keeping your players up to date with news or information announcements or updates that are going on inside of the map maybe you have a limited time event with a special game mode you can add that here anytime you want to just inform the players about something this is where you would want to put it i'm going to go ahead and fill out some example information just so you can get an idea of like how to format things or an idea about what you want to say another thing i wanted to mention is if you ever have a piece of text that is too long to fit on a single line there's a setting down here called auto wrap text and this is super useful because it just cuts off exactly at the edge of the scroll box and it begins on a new line. One thing to be careful about though is if you have auto wrap on a piece of text that is not longer than one line, it will format weird and I'm not sure if that was just something that I did wrong when I was creating the UI or if this is something that is like a, a real bug, um, I don't know. But hopefully you don't run into that. I made the mistake, so you don't have to. But just be super careful. If something's ever messed up, just check the auto wrap text because that is like a super big headache for me to figure out. So now that I've got the version 1.0 formatted, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the entire overlay. And it's important to know that your current release should be the first item inside of the scroll box. So for example, this would be version 1.10, and then this one would be version 1.0, but they should be descending in reverse order, I think if that makes sense. So this one, if I you know go ahead and do this, it would be the version 1.20. That's just important because you wanna make sure that the first thing that they see is the most recent update. 
Then if they decide to scroll down, it, it goes into the version history. Now that I've duplicated it, I'm just gonna delete all of the contents inside of here, except for the first three because these are like the main ones that are formatted. In this case, I'm just showing you how to design the UI, but if you were going to be doing this for real, you would want to make sure that the date is different for each version. So once you've got these scroll box completely filled out, go ahead and drag a regular button into the canvas panel. We want to make sure that the button is anchored to the center of the screen, just like all of the other widgets. The X position is zero and the Y position is 465. The size X is 250 and the size Y is 55. Make sure you align it by 50% on the X axis so that it's aligned directly in the center. Then go ahead and set the text to return. So now that we've got the UI taken care of, I'm gonna walk you through a really quick setup on how to implement this widget into your game. So the first thing we're gonna to want to do is go to the view bindings tab. It's at the bottom here and we can dock it in the layout. Deselect the button and click add widget. The first thing we're gonna to want to do is set this to one way to view model. We're gonna click the little drop down on the conversion functions or excuse me, we're actually going to click the conversion functions and we're going to get response button one. And then on the right hand field, click the creative model dialog view model and then scroll down to the bottom and click response and then click select. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bind this to the button. So we're going to follow the drop down inside this window here and click the button. And then we're going to find the clicked event. We're going to select that and we're going to compile and save the widget. From here forward, we can go ahead and we can close this widget panel. So now go to your content browser and type in pop up dialog. Drag the pop up dialog device into the scene. Inside of the settings panel over here, there is a few things that we need to change. We can ignore the main settings here because we are using a custom widget. It's important that the response type is set to one button and that the default back button is button one. As far as I know, those are the only settings that we need to change in order for this to work. There is a bug going on right now inside of UVFN. We're on version 37.5, but there is a bug happening where if you enable this, which is the do not close on button press, it'll just completely stop responding to all of the buttons. I'm having a hard time understanding what the bug is that to me that's what the setting is for but i've been talking to a few different developer friends of mine and they said that it's been like a super big problem so i thought i'd just shout that out really quickly while we're here hopefully the devs can resolve that fairly quickly but for now let's move on at the very bottom of the pop-up dialog device you can see a template override class go ahead and click the drop down and select the wbp patch notes that we just created the next thing that we want to do is go back to your content browser and type in button device, drag that into the viewport as well. And now what we want to do is set the interaction text to open patch notes. And I mean, this could honestly say anything that could say open news, open updates, open, you know, who knows? I'm gonna set the interaction radius to something like 0.33, just so that it's a little easier to see. Once you've got your button all set up, go back to these pop-up dialog device and scroll down until you see the functions section. Click the plus icon on the show event and click this little dropper tool. We want to link it to the button that we just created and it's important that we set the binding to on interact. Once you've got all that set up, go ahead and launch a session. So now that we're in game, we can go ahead and open up the new UI. It's important that you make sure everything looks good and there aren't any typos like this one right here. I highly recommend that you invite some buddies to come and play test your map before you publish it so that they can find things like this. Personally, I'm really dyslexic and it's always really helpful having another set of eyes take a look at your project before it gets released. Other than that, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you found it useful at all, please consider subscribing. I know everybody says it, but it's completely free and it helps out the channel a ton. I've got a lot more videos cooking up, so keep an eye out for those. Thank you so much for staying until the very end. I'll catch you next time. Peace.